Yeah, so give us just a quick overview, Gary, of how this system works out. So you have Jesus Christ coming in the secret coming, then you have seven years, and then you have a second coming, and then you have a thousand year semi golden age with rebuilt temple, reinstituted temple sacrifices. And Tim LaHaye, to go back to him, he was saying while he was alive that those sacrifices were efficacious to atone for sin. So this is an interesting kind of an end time scenario that supposedly comes from the Bible, but where does it really come from? I mean, where do you get the seven year tribulation? So give us just a bit of an overview of that. Okay, the seven years, it's, it's interesting when people talk about the seven year tribulation period, they say that that's from Revelation chapter four, when John was taken up into heaven and showing this vision, that that's supposedly where the rapture takes place, that's the rapture of the church. And although it doesn't say that's a rapture of the church, it says John was taken up into heaven. Paul said he was taken up into the third heaven as well, and that's certainly not the rapture, because he was still left on earth, and so so was John. So from chapter 4 through chapter 19, that's supposed to be the seven-year tribulation period. But here's an interesting fact. You will never find the phrase seven years in the book of Revelation, and yet it's supposed to be about a seven-year tribulation period, or actually a seven-year period in which three and a half years is a tribulation. Now, where do they get the seven years? And again, if you ask most Christians about where did that seven years come from, most of them don't have any idea. So now you've got to go all the way back to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And this is a key factor when you deal with this particular concept. Daniel is rehearsing Israel's history in the captivity. And he goes back and he reads Jeremiah's prophecy about the 70 years that they were going to be in the captivity. By this time, I'm going to assume that Daniel is relatively an old man and coming up on the end of the 70-year captivity period. And so that's kind of the paradigm here, 70 years of captivity. And then what we find happening is that Daniel is given an additional revelation of 70 weeks of years coming out to most, all of us probably agree, dispensationalists, amillennialists, premillennialists, post-millennialists, we pretty much all agree that that 70 weeks of years is 490 years, divided up into 7, 62, and 1. And it is out of that 70 weeks of years that they get the final seven years by dividing, by removing the final week of seven years from the other 69. So you get 483 years, prophecy clock stops, we live in a parenthesis, there's a gap between the 69th and the 70th week, and then the rapture takes place, and then the final week, the final seven years, comes on the scene, and that's when God starts dealing with Israel again. So that's where the seven years comes from. And all the rapture positions have to put a gap between that 69th year, the 483 years, and the final year, the seven years, and that's where it comes from. And yet there's nothing in Daniel 9 that says anything about there being a gap between the 69th and the 70th week of years. If there was no gap in time of the 70 years of captivity, why would we now assume that there's going to be a gap in time between the, the 69th week and the 70th week? It makes absolutely no sense, and there is no other time in Scripture where a specific number of days, weeks, or years is given that there is a gap in any of those days, weeks, or years. You've been listening to an excerpt of episode 104 of the Hank Unplugged podcast hosted by Bible Answer Man broadcast host Hank Hanegraaff. This episode is Are We Living in the Last Days? And it features guest Gary DeMar, who is an author and end times expert. To listen to episode 104 in its entirety, please click the link in the description below.